Aleluia. Aleluia. Good morning, RCF. It's good to be here. Amen. Amen. First, I want to say to my brother and his wife, I want to say thank you for them and the great work they're doing here in Denver. Amen. And it's just good to be here. Um, my wife is here, Beverly. Both of us is under the weather. That's our problem in coming to Denver in the winter time. Because <laughs> we live in the 80, de 80 degree weather all the time in the Virgin Islands. And so when it get humid, we just go to the beach. And so I would have been at home in short pants and t-shirt on right now and feeling fine. But I'm in Denver coughing, snorting, doing all that stuff. You know, I told her this is my last trip to the mainland in the wintertime. So if they don't have enough family stuff in the summertime, I ain't coming. <laughs> Every time I come to Denver, it's snow. So that's a sign that, guess what, we don't want you up here. Stay in the islands. <laughs> Amen. It's just good to be here with you guys. It's just good to see you guys. It's good to see Bob. How are you doing, Bob? Amen. 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 See some old friends and some, and some new faces. It's just a joy to be here. It's 1120. It's 1022. And so I don't want to hold you all long. So if you grab your Bibles and go with me to the book of Exodus. Amen. I was listening to the word Exodus chapter 19. I was listening to the worship team uh, this morning as they were singing about freedom and God reigns. Amen. And, 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 and the worship leader began to touch a little bit of my stuff. And, and, you know, when God has a word for people, he always sends somebody with confirmation of the word. Amen. And so she started to talk about the law, but I'm not talking about the law, but about the freedom to worship God. Amen. So in Exodus chapter 19, I want to read for you verses 9, 10, and 11. All right, and we're just going to share from that. We may look at uh, another part of the passage of Scripture uh, just to deal with it, just to try to get out of your hair way before uh, 11 o'clock or close as possible to 11 o'clock. Exodus chapter 19, verse 9 reads this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. I'm reading from the New King James, so just bear with me. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes. And be ready on the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people Upon, upon Mount Sinai. I just want to talk to you just for a little while, a meeting with God. A, a, a meeting, a meeting, a meeting with God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. And God, we glorify you and we do worship you and adore you for who you are. We thank you for worship. And so God, I submit myself to you that your perfect will will be done in earth today. And so I give you all the glory and I give you all the praise. So I thank you that I am a willing vessel to be used by you to declare your word to the people. In Christ's name, amen. amen. If you track the journey, and you guys are very familiar with the journey of the children of Israel, you know around the third chapter of the book of Exodus, God called out to Moses. And Moses went out and he met God in this very mountain and in the form of a burning bush. Moses said, I need to turn aside and see this great sight that he's seen. And he met God. And when he met God, God made him a promise. God said to Moses that, I want you to go into Egypt and to bring out the people and bring them here to this mountain to worship me. And so now they're at the mountain. They are free from Egypt. They've been let go after all these battles with Pharaoh because Pharaoh God would harden Pharaoh's heart and not let the people go. But ultimately, with God, God is always victorious. And so Pharaoh had to let the people go, and now they are at the mountain. When you look at verse number four with me real quick, you'll find that God is saying to the children of Israel, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I have bored you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. And so God lets them know that I'm the God who brought you here. 
you did not bring yourself here. And the reason why, the, the, the reason why they did not bring themselves, that they was not mature enough to bring themselves to this mountain. And so whenever you look at this text and see God brought them out in the wings of, in the wings of eagles, it speaks of God's ability, but it speaks us to the immaturity of the children of Israel. Comfortable for the eaglets. And God does the same thing in our lives. He, ru he ruffles the comfortable places in our lives and make it uncomfortable because he wants us to come out of the nest and begin to soar in life. He wants us to fly. But, but, but you see, whenever God ruffles the nest, we are falling on our faces and we are begging God to deliver us out of the situation and out of the, the, the thing that he's ruffling for us to fly or to move out. And so God will say to you, you're still immature. And what the eagle would do, it will ruffle the, next, the nest with the intent that the eagle will fly out of the nest. But whenever the eagles fly out, because it was so comfortable in the nest, sometimes it can't flap its wings. So it begins to fall. And the mother eagle swoops down, catches it on her wings, and carries it to the altitude it's supposed to be with the intent that the eagle will begin to fly. And that's what God has been doing with us all along. He's been trying to get us to fly towards our purpose. He's been trying to get us to fly towards our destiny. But too often, because we don't know what God is doing, we tend to fall. And so we can see the fall of the children of Israel on the journey. Give us water. We want food. You brought us out here so we may die. And sometimes things get so comfortable for us, we want to go back to the nest that's been ruffled. They wanted to go back to Egypt. We had it far better in Egypt. And they begin to remember the fish and the cucumbers. That's why a lot of times we revert back to the old things in life because that's the comfortable thing that we know. But God is saying to us, I don't want you to go back to the place that I brought you from. I brought you out so that way you could be a forward-going people and not a backward-thinking people of always wanting to go back to the place that I have brought you from. So he had to carry them because they was not ready for the journey by themselves. And so here they are at the mountain. And they saw the miracles of God in the wilderness. They saw him turn, give them water. They saw him turn bitter water, sweet, bitter water into sweet water. They got the manna from heaven. They got all of this stuff. But, but even though they saw God, they had never met this God before. They had never heard his voice. And so now God is saying to you, now that you're here at the mountain, now that you're here at restoration, I am here, and I'm here to meet with you. I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to let you know that I exist and that, and that I am the true and living God, and there's no God like me. I am God all by myself. I exist. I am the one who gave you the water. I am the one who gave you the manna. I am the one who protected you from the Amalekites when they wanted to kill you. It's me who... But now comes time for me to reveal myself to you. A lot of us have been walking with God. I have never met God. A lot of us, a lot of us, we come to church... And we have never met the God that we say we serve. And God is here every Sunday. And let me prove to you that guess what? You come to church and, 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 and to prove to you that guess what? You never met God. You come in one way and you go out the same way you came in. And I believe in all of my heart it's impossible for me to come into the presence of God and go out the same way. I came in. 
So God said to them, to Moses, Moses, go down. If you read the text, you'll find that it's quite interesting because you find Moses, who's 80-something years, going up and down this mountain approximately around eight times. And I begin to wonder how that old man can climb that mountain up and down. But that's just the strength of God. Because God gives us strength in the hour of our weakness. And so he would go up and talk to God and God would send him back down. He would go up and talk to God and God would send him back down. Now God said to him, now you go down and say to the children of Israel that I need them to get themselves ready. Because I am coming down to meet with them on the third day. Notice the fact that the text says, go and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Which speaks as to our preparation for meeting with God. Because here's the thing. You can't just get ready to meet with God on Sunday morning alone. A lot of us just get up on Sunday, and it's on Sunday morning we're trying to get ourselves ready, get our, get our minds ready, get our hearts ready to meet with God. But let me tell you something. Sunday morning is not enough for you to make the preparation that you need to make with God. Let me tell you something. You, begin, you need to begin making your preparation from Friday night. So that means Friday night you can't go to the clubs. That means that mean Friday after work, you can't, you can't have a drink. I'm sorry. You, you, you got to begin to make preparation to meet with God. Because God is coming to meet with you for a specific reason. He's coming to reveal himself to you. And here's the thing. In making preparation to meet with God, you ought to have a picture in your mind of the God you're going to meet. Here's the thing, when you come here, you're not coming to meet the great gift giver. You're not coming to meet the man upstairs. You're coming to meet a holy God. And so you ought to have a picture in your mind of how awesome God is, of how holy God is. And if I'm coming to meet with a holy God, then, then guess what? I need five days to get myself ready to meet this awesome God that I'm going to meet. A.W. Tozer writes this. He says, no one can know the grace of God who has not first known the fear of God. And it seems to me that, that we have lost the reverential fear of who God is. Because we come and we have this idea in our head because we are living under grace. And I thank God for grace, but, but I think we have perverted grace to a degree. Because we are living under grace, we think that I can just come. No, no, no. It takes a preparation to meet the holy God because he's the great I am. There's no God like him. He's a God without sin in his life. And so we ought to have a picture in our mind before God. In other words, when we come in before God, we ought to understand that God is an all-powerful God. And I'm coming to him because I need his help. That's why I'm coming. Because I need his help. I, I know what he can do. And I know with him all things are possible. And I know that he knows how to change every circumstances in my life. I know that he's my present help in the time of trouble. And so I had a picture in my mind that I'm not just coming before any God. I'm coming before the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe. The God that spoke and said, let there be and it was. The God that breathed breath into man and man became a living soul. The God that gave the sea its boundary told the stars to hang in the sky and do that move and then give you permission to move so I can't come anyhow I'm meeting a holy God. I ought to know that he's the all-knowing God. That he's holy. And there isn't anything that he don't know about me. 
He already knows. Even though he wants me to ask, he already knows what I have need of way before I ask. So I come to him for counsel. I come to him for wisdom. So I got to prepare myself. I ought to know that he is a God that's everywhere at the same time. And so I am coming into his presence. And in my coming into his presence, I am looking for him to do for me what the king did for Esther. I, I want him to hand me the scepter. You see, a lot of us come and, and God looks at us and ouch. And he looks at us and he turns his back because we are not ready to meet with God. But when you come into God's presence, you want the scepter. So you got to get yourself spiritually ready to meet with God. The second thing, you ought to get yourself mentally prepared to meet with God. Look at me to what in verse 6 and verse 7. And you shall, watch this now. Notice what he said to the children of Israel. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. He says, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called the elders of the people and, and laid before their faces all these things which the Lord had commanded him. See, God wants us to be a peculiar type of people on the earth. You and I are not called to walk any way. We're not called to live any type of way. And so we ought to mentally prepare. I ought to mentally prepare my mind to meet with God. I ought to be able to take my mind off of everything that I went through the week and begin to say, God, I am coming to meet with you. Get rid of all the negative thoughts and all the bad thoughts I had in my mind. Come on, we get some bad thoughts in our mind, don't we? Come on, all the things that has bombarded us and all the people that has actually made us angry and all the frustration. I need to get all that stuff off of me and get my mind mentally prepared to meet with God because when I come into his presence and, and he stands and he begins to reveal himself before me, the awe of God ought to make me bow myself into his presence. But here's the thing, if I'm coming into God's presence and I got other things on my mind, I can't lock in on what God is saying to me. And too often we miss God because we come to church with so many things on our minds. Our minds are so bombarded with all kinds of things that when the preacher is preaching, we don't hear a word. Come on, you know, you had a like my brother would call it, a holy debate with the wife the night before. A deep theological discussion that, that, that actually erupted in an argument. And, 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 and you drive into church on, the, on Sunday morning, both of you, and you, you don't say boo to each other all the way to church. And you come into church... And you get out the car, and as you put on your jacket, you also put on the church mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are you doing? I'm blessed and highly favor of the Lord. How's the ma'am? Oh, she's great. Everything is all right, but you mad. <laughs> And, and, and she comes and she, she, she leads worship and, and you're sitting there and you're watching her from the front row and, and really you're, in your mind you're saying, I wish you'd just shut up. <laughs> and sit down. And then you get up to preach and she's saying, I know what he's doing up there anyway. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We, we, we ought to be mentally prepared. To meet with God. We, we, we got to fix everything 
and all the messes in our lives because we are coming into the presence of a holy God. God said to Moses, go down and tell them today and tomorrow, sanctify themselves. And here's the third thing he said, wash your clothes. The clothes signifies the sinful nature. I, I can't come into God's presence with the old man. I can't come into God's presence with the old thinking. I can't come into God's presence with the, with the old behavior and the old mentality and the old attitude. I can't come into God's presence thinking about, y'all know what we all think about. I ought to wash my clothes. I ought to begin to seek his face and begin to ask him to cleanse me and make me right. Because I'm coming to meet you. I'm coming into your presence and I'm coming to be healed and I'm coming to be delivered. I'm, I'm coming to be set free. I'm coming to be helped. I need you, Lord. I need you every hour. There is a moment that I don't need you. And God, I understand that all my help comes from the Lord. And I don't know nowhere else to go. I've been to the doctor. And the doctor have given me some bad news. I, 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 and I've spent all I already have, God, and now I'm broke. And, but if I can only come into your presence, and if you afford me the opportunity but to bow myself and touch but the hem of your garment, because I know that if I touch you, God, I'll be healed. Oh, he touched me, and something happened. And all the joy that flooded my soul, something happened, and now I know I'm no longer the same because he touched but here's the problem we want God to touch us with all of our filth and all of our mess when he has already cleaned us up and we have already gone back and wallowed ourselves in the filth of the earth and we want God to that's why some of us are still in the condition that we're in because God said you got to get yourself ready To meet with me. You all prepare yourself to meet with me. Here's my last thing. Not only do I need to be ready spiritually and mentally, but I also need to be ready physically. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate or sanctify the people. Tomorrow, for in two days, I'm coming down to meet with you. And physically, physically, we ought to be spending time with God to come to meet with him. I'm coming to worship. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm coming, God, because I need you. But if physically I'm not prepared then it becomes difficult for me to come. Let me prove to you physically how most of us are not prepared. We wake up on Sunday morning, and we know, well, for Restoration Church starts at 9.30. But physically, the body say to you, you got time. Come on. And you roll over, and you say, I can take Five more minutes. And, and, and five turns to 10. And 10 turns to 15. And 15 turns to 20. And, and so you come in the presence of God. Watch this now. If, 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 that's all right. We got the same problem in the Virgin Islands. In the Virgin Islands, they come when they're ready. Serious, there's no time in the Virgin Islands. No matter how you try to change the mentality, you just ought to be glad that they show up. And please, God, don't let it rain. They call the house. Pastor, we have in church, it's drizzling. <laughs> because physically they ain't prepared. They, they rather stay at home. And every excuse 
to stay out of the presence of God. Let's not talk about Wednesday night and, and prayer meeting and Bible study time. They, they, come on, they, they got this crazy problem in their head. So physically, they're never ready to meet with God. And we wonder why our bodies are so physically decaying and in such a mess. And why we are always sick and always going through all the things that we are going through. Because we are never physically prepared. To meet God. God said to them, let me get out of your hair. Be ready on the third day. I wonder who here is ready. This is your third day. Notice what he said. On the third day, be ready. He didn't say to get ready. Be ready. I wonder who's ready to meet him. Who, who is ready to be delivered? Who is ready to be helped? Because when God comes, and, and, and Felix Jr. put it so wonderful yesterday with, the, with the, the man by the pool of Bethesda, God did not talk to him about his condition. God just asked him, do you want to be made well, whole? Because when God comes, God don't have time to talk to you about your physical problems. God's coming to work. God, God, God is coming to touch. God is coming to deal with the problem, not to have a discussion about the problem. God don't have time to talk to you about your problem. He is God. He's holy. He already knows and he just, he is coming. He just wants to know if you are ready and have you prepared yourself to come to the house of God and to receive from God that which he's going to do for you? Are you ready? I don't know why you're here this morning. For some of us, guess what? Church has become so much of a tradition. Let me put it this way. It has become so much of a religion to us that Sunday morning, it becomes a routine for us to come to church. So I know it's Sunday. I'm coming to church on Sunday. And after church is over, I go back to my regular business and my regular life. But coming to church is not just something to do. I'm coming to be helped. So he says, are you ready? Be ready. Did you get yourself ready? Because I am here. You don't need to welcome me. I'm an omnipresent God. How can I welcome you to where you're already at? Uh, and you're all over at the same time and every place at the same time. Wherever I go, I meet you. You don't meet me. I meet you. Uh, come on, you don't run into me. I, I run into you. And since I run into you and I run into your presence, I run into your presence to get the thing that I need you to do for me. And so I ought to always be ready to meet with God. Are you ready? Because I don't know what you're going through. I mean, are you really ready? Do you know who you're going to meet? God don't have a magic wand. So he's not the man upstairs. He's our father who art in heaven. And if I'm going to meet you, hollow it. P. That's the highest praise. Hollow it. Be thy name, thy will. And I tell folks, guess what? When the verse says, thy will be done in earth, I say, I am the earth. Because he took the earth and formed and made me, I am the earth. So thy will be done in me as it is already done in heaven. And so if, 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 if John is messed up on earth, but well in heaven, God needs to get me well in earth as I'm already well in heaven. Because in his mind, I'm already in heaven. I'm already delivered. I'm already set free. So he needs to come and work on me in earth and get me ready to do his will. But the question is, am I ready to meet with God? Are you ready? You sure you're ready? Well, all right. 
meet with God right now. He's here. Meet with God.